big generalization of the quadratic reciprocity rule. The thing that had fascinated me most as a kid. So I became his student and I couldn't have had a better start to my mathematical life. He, he gave me the idea for my thesis. And, and that's how you started. So I started. And you graduated from Princeton and then uh, went to Harvard. Where are we? Uh, I stayed in Princeton. We had a seminar on class field theory. I was a postdoc there, and so I was able to stay uh, Longer. More, three more years. And then I had one year at Columbia University okay. and then then Harvard. And then you stayed there for 30 years. 35. 35. And then you came down to Texas. And I came to Texas, <laughs> and it was really a great <coughs> privilege to be able to spend the next 20 years here. I okay. really enjoyed it. It's, it was a very uh, collegial. There was, everybody was friendly. Did, did, you, did you have many students? Did you like also the educational part of your job? Well, I love teaching, and I had many many uh, students. Okay. Still in contact with them, of course, I guess. Well, some of them. Yeah. yeah. Many of them. Yeah. And um, did you, do you have other very, very strong passion in your life except mathematics? I don't know how strong it is. I like to hike. I, I, well, you know, I've got a bad ankle. But it's ma mainly been kind of a narrow, I'm not a Renaissance man in any sense, but I spend mathematics. It's Your biggest, my biggest passion. Yeah. Biggest passion, and um, yeah, I would like to. What is your suggestion for a young mathematician or a young person then who'd like to start an academic career in mathematics? If you can have one suggestion in any kind of field, that would be applied math, numerics, number theory. Don't, sure, he, you, he or she should not do mathematics unless they can't help it. It's just the pull is so strong. Okay, so one has to have a very, very... Well, I think, yeah, it's because, I don't know, I think, uh, <coughs> that would be just my advice. Yeah, nowadays and the, the, the economy is not doing well. Many young people they they kind of leave academia though they would have they have a strong desire to stay, but somehow the um, life brings to other decisions. But this is a pity maybe that is a, um, that this is life, I guess. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, that. Certainly, if they are passionate about mathematics, they should do everything they can to uh, stay and, and do it. But uh, if life prevents that, that's, that's yeah. really sad. But if you shouldn't do mathematics because you think that you, you could get a good job or it'd be an easy job or for some reason like that. Yeah. The, um, what, uh, uh, my last question is what I, I already told you about the separation between pure math and applied math. Maybe in the States it's not very strong, there are some countries where it's even stronger. And uh, do you have a comment on that? Well, uh, it's sometimes you can't tell why that is. When I was a, when I was your age, doing number theory, I had no no idea that it would ever be of any use to anybody what I was doing. But now with high speed computers, uh, it's of tremendous use uh, okay. in you know storing information, encrypting information, decoding. It's a, the commercial world is based <laughs> on these things now, okay. which I, so it's very practical. But I, that's not why I did it. Okay. it would be, I had no idea I would have bet on 
you know, I don't know, some big odds that would never be used. Okay. So you know, you don't know what's applied. Yeah. And, but I still do it mainly because I do some consulting, but uh, cryptology type of stuff. Okay. But uh, my real heart is in in uh, pure math. Math for the just sheer beauty of it, and I think both sides are equally important. They have different, uh, slightly different criteria. Yeah, but it is in pure math you have to prove it. In applied math, it just has to work. You don't have to prove it. Sorry, I was just about to call you. I'm oh. just finishing an interview with. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I can also you. ask you some question if you want. <laughs> Uh, hey, well, Ted. People, uh, I, can, I don't know. I mean, people will Congratulations. See you tonight. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I was, uh, I was just, I was just about to phone you. Huh? We're essentially done, are we? Yes, I think we are essentially done. Yes. Did you have a question for me? I mean, M maybe you can comment uh, on this on this prize. Comment on the prize. Yes. I think it's very well deserved. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to say. And it's a great honor for you to see Austin to yes, have yes. it. Hello. Yeah, sure. Congratulations on your first. Thank <laughs> couldn't, couldn't be a better choice. So yeah, I think so too. No, I'm, I'm very far from this field. But <laughs> I think so too. May I ask one question referring to the third question? So the reason that you do, you have done whatever you did in it's just because you are very excited about it. Right. And nothing else. Not because they're, they uh, might be useful. Uh, no, it's just it was for the, what you said, glory of the human spirit. Or but what, did what you have a hint that that might be fundamental to something? Not really. You, you mean for some use? Yeah. Some practical yeah. use? That, that Mm. Okay, of course, maybe 50 years ago to think about this high-speed computing was had, was maybe too far thinking, but... Well, some people were, of course. I had, but I'm not, I didn't, in fact, in Princeton, uh, John von Neumann was building a high-speed computer, but it had, elect it had tubes instead of transistors, you know, and so it took enormous room An enormous room, yes. Because of the heat that generated <laughs> by the students. Anyway, I was familiar with that. that was, but I wasn't clever enough to realize that that would revolutionize commerce and, <laughs> and uh, communications. And I didn't think that far ahead. Okay. Then, then we are done. Thank okay. you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much.